Hello, everyone, and welcome to the third episode of the 1973 podcast. I'm your host, AC. I'm here with these two bananas once again. We're here to uh, talk all things Gen X. And uh, don't forget to uh, like, support the channel so we can get this going. And I forgot to mention that last week, uh, but let's let's have at it. Let's uh, let's get right into it. Let's start talking uh, some NHL trade deadline and uh, the big move, the Patrick Kane move. Uh, that first game with the Rangers, he was looking really out of place. There seemed to be like not too much chemistry with uh, anybody on the team. I mean that the the excuse they gave was that they had no chance to practice the power play and nobody knew where anybody in. And, and I just called bullshit on that right off the hop. I mean, these guys are elite. Tarasenko, him, and Aaron, that should be lights out right off the, right off the bat. If you don't know how to, if you don't know what you're doing out there, I mean, especially with these guys were top line power play guys right off the rip. I, I mean, don't make excuses for, you know, whatever trade you pulled off and it's not working right off the cuff, but. Thomas, thoughts uh, going forward with the with the trade deadline? It just seemed like everybody with the Rangers on the that were on the ice with him, they were being everybody was too polite. They're, everybody was making too many passes instead of the puck. They they I don't know if they didn't want to seem like a puck hog or what, but I just just they're just going to be more aggressive and shoot the puck. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. But uh, Ed, did you, have you watched uh, any of the trade stuff since uh, Friday? No, I saw the Patrick Kane stuff. I thought, I mean, I thought it was a great move. I mean, who doesn't want to go play for original six? You know, you leave an original six, you know, and then you go play at MSG. I mean, obviously it's not, you know, like, it's not like playing up at the Montreal Forum or anything like that, you know. Just or, or play or playing in Chicago with another original six team, but, you know. Well, that too, well, yeah, I mean, all I'm saying is just that, I mean, you know, I mean, I didn't see him play or anything like that. I'm just saying, you know, I think it's, you know, he's in a whole new team whole new role kind of but i definitely agree with you that you know i mean these guys are elite power play you know i mean they they shouldn't be making too many passes that type of thing i mean yeah yeah i I mean every you don't know you don't forget how to play hockey on the phone right (laughs) not when you make not when you're making that kind of money no no i mean you know i mean yeah you know go ahead dad I was just uh, going to say, just to, for an old school reference, I mean, I haven't strapped on the blades and carried an axe in about, I don't know, seven years or so. But, I mean, the last time I played, it was kind of like, you know. Everything was in black and white on. last time you yeah. played. Yeah, well, you know, yeah. <laughs> Mini one-on-one was still a thing on uh, TV 38 last time you, yeah. you played. You know, I, I'm just going to, hey, well, uh, you know, the Fred, you know, Fred, uh, the Bruins look a little snake bit here in the second period. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's no that shit. generation, if I remember correctly. A lot of the, a lot of people won't know what that one means for. We no, no. We, that that's why we got the podcast because it's you know Gen X stuff. If you didn't grow up on it. You don't know what the reference is. So, I think we should use that the old Channel Thirty Eight thing as our uh, intro. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm all for it. I just don't want to get uh, any copyright infringement on this. <laughs> Oh, come um, on, man. You, you make all that big money up there? Come on, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I'm, I'm sitting on uh, loads of money. That's why we're doing this, because <laughs> I, I got all this time to burn. Um, I, I mean, don't you, like, don't you like your cigars with $100 bills? Come on, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I laid a lot of things on $100 bills. It's called uh, <laughs> Anything Hockey for the Kids. I just <laughs> I just piss money. Um, speaking, of, <laughs> speaking of piss and money... Uh, good segue there, Red. We're going to talk about uh, the deal that Pasternak signed. Tom, being a Bruins guy, you got to be all over that. You got to, you got to, you got to weigh in heavily with this one. We're we're, we're going to an expert. We're you know, we're going to the Bruins guy, the, the, the big guy Bruins with, hawk, <laughs> the guy with I, the the Bobby Orr jersey hanging in the back. You got you got to represent. Let's. Wearing the Tim Thomas All Star jersey I mean, too. I mean, Tommy, all you need is a megaphone with hearts all over it, brother. <laughs> I'm I'm happy with the uh, with the money, but the length of the contract I don't like. I just think it's just it's it's stupid for anyone. I I don't agree with any of the length of anyone in in the league getting that much money. It's and I mean that many years. It's just ridiculous. So it's it seems like the culture of the way they do these 
uh, contracts now is they, they load them up. And by the time they're still paying these guys big money at the, at the back end, they're already not worth the money. And that's why they try to move contracts at the end. Like the, you know, the Shea Weber thing that he's on Phoenix. Like he, he, I saw a video of Phoenix's greatest starting five and not one of the guys played a minute in Phoenix. <laughs> it just it, from Datsuk to Shea Weber, all these, they're just salary dumps. And it just blows my mind how those contracts are for so long. And yeah, okay, you got the peak years, you got the 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. But then on the back end of it, you got the years where they're already making so much money and you can't move anybody or get anybody new because the contract is so heavy that you're almost handcuffed. And it seems like it happens to almost every team nowadays yeah. in the league. But uh, in every sport now, too. I mean, you know, I mean, it's, I mean, you look at football, you look at baseball. I mean, all these contracts are ridiculous when you think about it. I mean, I mean, what is it? Tommy, New York, New York Mets is still paying what? Uh, what Bobby, Bobby Bonilla. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and that's from right, he hasn't he hasn't like stepped on a on a baseball diamond in what twenty years? Yeah, pretty close. Wasn't you it? Know? Wasn't it something ridiculous at the time, like a thirty year deal? I think it was that sounds about something right. like eighteen, I believe. Wow. It, then it's just I don't know where they come from with this stuff. It seems to be the the way that they they do it now but you know thoughts long term on on the structure of that like well what's what's your take on it ed like what if, if you were gm and would you would you ever do something like that i don't think i would i mean i think that it just hampers you you know it, like your future now i mean like just to use it as a you know as like an example of like colorado or tampa bay you know like th- they probably are going to be two of the teams that, you know, make a strong run back to the cup this year. You know, if you're making a cup run and you need that one player or that those two players, all right, let's do a deal, you know, and maybe we'll hamstring us a couple of years down the line. But for myself, honestly, I'd have a hard time paying somebody that type of big money. I mean, I think that any business, you know, like, you know, if you want to go corporate business and that type of thing, everybody has a budget. You know, and I, I feel like that, you know, the salary cap is really kind of like a fake budget. And I think, you know, down the line, these contracts, you know, I mean, how are they going to pay for these contracts down the line? You know, like not in this, not in the next five, 10 years, but OK, when these amounts, you know, when you look at Russell Wilson, just to switch sports, but still a gigantic contract for 230 something million. How are they going to pay for that? You know, and so when you flip it back to hockey, I mean, hockey doesn't have the TV revenue like what um, NFL does. You know, they don't have the revenue like Major League Baseball has. I mean, it's, you know, unfortunately, I mean, I still feel like it's one of the best sports ever. I mean, but I, it doesn't it doesn't have that cachet of money like the NFL does. Thomas? Yeah, I, I totally agree. I, and they're not getting any help with the, from ESPN. ESPN's coverage, I think, oh. is terrible. Did you see, you saw that clip I sent you guys this week about, yeah. uh, Yeah. Oh, uh, Stephen A. Smith. Yeah. Oh, that was, that's so, so bad. So bad. Yeah. Yeah. You're, it'd be like any product that your company is in business with where you uh, totally foo foo it whatsoever. You own that. You spent big money to get them away from NBC and they do nothing to promote it. it it's terrible yeah. i mean uh we could go into the whole ethics of how it was presented and the whole thing but that's that's not the point it's just the, the point being is why is hockey always the sport that gets no respect then it's it's got everything whatever whatever i don't care what excuse you have about hockey i can't follow the puck you know all the cliches can't do this. Can't 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 follow the puck. Oh, it's it, it's it's not an inner city sport or whatever. Let let's pause right there. Just came out today that the NHL wants to add two more expansion teams. Atlanta again for the third time, in Houston. 
I I gotta get you your take on that. I have to get your take. We just talked. I think it was the first episode we talked about that whole, you know, where teams should go and and the culture of it. So weigh in, Ned. Uh, let it rip. Why are you trying to do something that doesn't work? I mean, this isn't running. That we're not we're not running a football play here. Where okay, hey, we're gonna we're gonna run an ISO here. And uh, yeah, well, we, we only got about two, three yards on the first on the first carry, and then we did it again. And only get the same thing. Oh well, you know, we're gonna break it here. Come on, man! That uh, is the reason. The same market. And the yeah. only th- reason why I can see them even entertaining Atlanta again is that's where the TBS studios are. That's the only reason. But when they had the Flames the first time, TBS was on the up. No, right. one time did they ever get involved with the Flames? And, you know, off to Calgary and, you know, the rest is history, it thrashes. Sure. But if that's the reason, you cannot tell me that there is not a market somewhere that's never had a chance at a franchise that wouldn't do better than an area that's had two NHL teams already. You, you, you gotta, you gotta, I got no words for it. I mean, yeah, Tom, yeah. what do you got? That's that's somebody's ego getting in the way and saying we can make this work. I know I can make this. And it, Atlanta's going to fail. It might not be in a year or two, but it's going to be three, four years down the road. They're going to end up failing. And I mean, you've got teams with fan bases like Quebec, Hartford. I mean, those teams, they're just dying for, to have a chance. And I don't know if somebody owed somebody a favor, Batman or whoever it is, is just, I don't know. They're just stubborn and it's their, their ego. They don't want to admit that they were wrong the first time with Atlanta. And to me, Texas already has one team. You don't need give somebody else a chance that hasn't had a chance before you add another team to, uh, to a state that's already has a team. I, I always thought that the good rule of thumb would be throw an AHL franchise somewhere, see how the market does and then go from there. See if it's valuable enough Mm-hmm. of a draw that you could get an NHL style, you know, franchise. The the city that I always thought would do well in the U S with that, because where it's located in Minnesota is Wisconsin, maybe Milwaukee, yeah. you know, it's Wisconsin Badgers, big hockey school. Mm-hmm. There's gotta be some likability up there for an NHL team. You never know. They have, had, they've had those Milwaukee admirals for a while now. I don't know the, you know, the start date, but, They've been around for a while. They were, I think, they were in that uh, that old um, what was what league was that that the Detroit Vipers were in with the Radic Bonk. I'm trying to I'm trying to think of uh, what International they, Hockey League. Yeah, the, the the old IHL. That's where they came from, and they're still around. So they got to be do, doing something, right? Remember the Utah Grizzlies? Remember all those teams? Yeah, yeah. Roadrunners. There's got to be there's got to be other teams. I, I mean, think, go ahead. Uh, no, I was no. just going to say, I, I just think part of it too is, is that, you know, from a, from a media standpoint, Atlanta is a huge media market. And I think, I think that that's what they, what they think. But the thing is, is like, when you go to these other, other markets, you know, where, like that's not a traditional hockey market. Well, how do you build a fan base? Well, you, you got to get people to involved. And I think it kind of goes back to like what you were saying, like you could do some, you know, off-site hockey games there to see what the draw is. What's the excitement? You know, I mean, because like down here when the Mississippi Seawolves, they they brought in three, they did three games last year. And the first game they sold out probably about 70% of the building. Second game, they, they sold out about 85. And then the third game, they sold the whole building out. I mean, you know, I mean, you're talking about, you know, like Gulf Coast Hockey League, you know, pretty much, you know, it's a step below what American Hockey League is. It's good hockey, you know. So, I mean, I think it's just a, it's a, I think this circles back to what Tom said. It's an ego thing because it's a media market thing because Atlanta is a big media market and it, it's about money, you know? But, Always about money. Always. But, but the thing is, but if you don't put any fans in this, if you don't put any assets in the seats, how do you make money? Yeah. You know, you can't charge $15 for a beer when there's no nobody in the seat, you know? Yeah. Just I like, was talking to somebody that lived uh, near Raleigh with um, where the Carolina Hurricanes sure. play. And yeah. the 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 ruse that they have is it's so close to the campus of the college that uh-huh. the day of the game, 
they take all the tickets that are unsold. And if the kids line up two hours before the game, they can get tickets for five bucks to fill the stadium. So what kind of, yeah, it looks full. Maybe it's rowdy, which is cool. I mean, it's, it's, yeah. that's a good atmosphere to be in. Yes. But are you really in a hockey market? And you've no, won a Stanley Cup there. Atlanta never won anything, so at least there's no okay. history like that there. But what are you trying to accomplish? Even the, even though Dallas has been competitive, they've only won that one Stanley Cup. Say what you want about Buffalo. They always talk about, you know, their teams not being that great. But they've been in the league since 1970. They've had Hall of Fame players there. It, you know, you can't compare – Apples to oranges. And Buffalo is so close to the Canadian border. They draw the Canadian fans too. Right, right. It's it's true. It's true. Um, just the, the thoughts on expansion and where they could put it. I mean, it, it's the possibility. Back. Yeah, as as Pull always. Back. Yeah, yeah. That, Maybe that'd bring be, it back. That'd be my first choice before yeah, Atlanta. Right. I mean, yeah, I thought. I mean, we were only talking about this two weeks ago, and it's like I can't believe that's actually a thing. I cannot yeah. believe that's actually a thing. Quebec Nordiques again. That's yeah. what they need to do. You know, um, bring it back. I, I mean, uh, talking about going into the the playoffs. If if an East team, Eastern Conference team, does not win the Stanley Cup this year, oh, they're I'll, loaded. I'll be shocked. Absolutely they are loaded shot. this year. It's, it is going to be so tough. I mean, as good of a season as the Bruins are having, they may lose the first round. Right now, I think they play the Islanders, I think. And it's uh, it's going to be – I mean, some of these matchups are going to be – I can't wait. It's uh, definitely one of the more uh, intriguing years to watch just with all the movement that happened. Like, is some team going to, you know, bring in somebody that ruins the chemistry they had going in? Is somebody going to be, you know, uh, more of a contender because they brought in somebody that you didn't think was going to be a key aspect of, of it? You know, is is Tampa still going to be Tampa? Uh, they still, you know, the the team to beat in the East? Yeah, they, what do you think of uh, John Cooper the other day uh, benching the top line there, Kucherov? Braden Point and Stamkos benched him for the whole third period. I, I love I, it. Yeah, there you go. I, I mean, you uh, complacency sometimes is not good with, you know, sometimes you get to rattle cages, you know, kick, a, kick somebody in the ass to get them going. Who knows? I mean, maybe maybe they expect to play and they, they were chirping, you know, and when that happens, what if somebody's out working you? Uh, you're talking mm -hmm. at, a, at a pro level going into the playoffs. It, maybe they need a spark. Who knows? Who knows? I like it. I like it. It shows those younger players that if he's going to do it to the big stars, that I mean, it's it keeps everybody in check. I, I really thought it was a good move. That's a I do Tortor too. Tortorella move right there. Yeah, but I that's think, a, but I think a, what he said, I think what he said after the game was really good. Like he said, that's not what we're about. I'm paraphrasing here, of course. I mean, yeah. he's like, that's not what that's not what we're about here. We're about here. We put in work here. And that we weren't being, we weren't working. So, how do you send a message? We go back. To, that goes back to you, Randy. How do you send a message? You rattle somebody's cage. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right in the mind, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you call Dicky Dunn. You put false stories in the paper. Make, <laughs> yeah. make make them think that they're moving to Florida when they're in Florida. <laughs> That's really right. screw with them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, Dicky Dunn. I mean, he tells the truth. You know. Yeah. He, 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 he the spirit of the thing. The spirit of the thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so going into the playoffs, who's your pick in the East, Tom? I'm a homer. I'm, I think it's Boston. I think it's going to be Boston, Carolina in the uh, – and I Get think Carolina has a good shot of beating the Bees. But I, I don't think Toronto – I don't like their goaltending. And then Ryan Riley got hurt, uh, broke his – a couple fingers, I think. Right, he may, right. He may be up for the playoffs. I mean, uh, up until the playoffs. So, Ed, pick in the East. Who's your pick Tampa. in the East? Tampa. Yep. I'm going uh, Carolina. I I remember uh, just having this funny feeling that they were going to do something this year, and 
you know, here I am bad mouthing them about, uh, you know, letting the college students five dollar seats. Five, $5 seats and, uh, you know, dollar dog night or whatever the hell they're doing over there. But I got a feeling that they're just, uh, this could be, this could be the year that they, they surprise a lot of people. And if they do win the whole thing, they deserve it because that, that's a tough, uh, tough yeah. area to come out of, but in the West, so who knows wide open. Wide yeah. open. I mean, could be Dallas. I, I, I don't know. I mean, is, is Landis Cog going to be back? I haven't heard anything at all. Uh, the way the injuries are now, where it's upper body, lower body, you never know. And the, going back to another pet peeve of mine, how bad the uh, media coverage is for the NHL. It's terrible. Yes. It's, it's terrible. If you uh, you might get a, a cookie in a local market, uh, somebody says something that they saw somebody working out or skating again or something, but it's 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 awful. You know from doing fantasy how hot it is to to keep track of what's going on. Yeah. You, you know, you'll have guys in your lineup that you had on the IR and you had no idea they were going to play that night. It, it's it's crazy. It, yeah. it, the, the coverage is it's awful. Ed, <laughs> what do you got? And speaking of awful hockey coverage, it's you're in the, you know, you're in no man's land down there for uh, hockey news. I am. Yeah. It's a... Uh... It's a little tough to come by down here. Yeah, I think the closest uh, I think ice the, rink, the closest ice rink to you was on an oil rig in the Gulf. <laughs> well, yeah. No, actually, it's closest closest rink is five minutes away. Oh but, wow! Yeah, it's it, there's only like a small group of people that play, and um, you know, I haven't I haven't explored those options. Oh. Um, do you but, still uh, do what you used to do? Do you just go in the locker room and hang around just to see what's going on? I don't even know how to answer that. <laughs> you were the guy that I had to explain to one time that. Uh, oh, shut up, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Questions, comments, Ed? Go eat a bag of Richards, man. <laughs> so speaking of, speaking of heat, uh, we were talking about the uh, MJF fallout from uh, – the AEW pay-per-view last night was uh, pretty epic. If you're into uh, good heat from uh, old school heel where he, uh, during the match, grabbed the uh, drink from the uh, lady in the crowd and uh, threw it at the kid. And uh, I guess it was, you know, it wasn't planned. And, you know, I, I like that kind of stuff. It, it actually uh, brings back a little old school flavor and uh, thoughts on, some old school heat from you two guys. Ed, go ahead. I love it. I love it. I mean, like, you know, I, I remember the Attitude Era, you know, or back to NWO era, NWO era back in the day. That was some fun stuff, man. The promos that those guys cut. And, I mean, they li most of those guys were living the gimmick, you know. And it was, it was just, like, you look back and you see, like, those promos that, man, like, Dusty cut. Road Warriors, you know, uh, Ric Flair, the Horseman. You know, you go back to, like, some of the stuff that The Rock did. You go back to, like, what Degeneration X used to do. Man, that was some just classic stuff, man. And they were good, you know. And so to see, like, some of these, like, a new guy like MJF, man, he's awesome. Especially, like, that 10-minute thing that he did on the mic probably about, what, four or five months ago? And he just went off. Man, that was awesome. Like, it was it – was, it was probably one of the best promos that I've seen probably in this century. <laughs> you know, that's saying a lot. What Promos. I like, what I like about him, not to uh, cut off Tom's response to that is I, during the media scrum last night, he said what I like from a world champion. Well, you know, you're going to pay to see him. Yeah. You, you're not going to get him wrestling on TV for Every free. Week. Yeah. And, and I think yeah. that the allure of you had to pay to see a title match that was important on TV yeah. that that works for him. And with the heat would not, it just adds to the allure of, you know, it, 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 he's not like a Ric Flair type heel, but he's more like a Tully Blanchard style heel. It's that a punch in the face, the, the, the guy that was the high school jock, he, you know, that kind of, you know, he's, He's better than you, and he knows it. That's his tagline. So you live in the gimmick, and when you see That's something, right. yeah, if you go on YouTube and you see some of the meet and greets he's done, I mean, he's 
there was a kid in a wheelchair and he tore the kid up in the wheelchair. And he, he cut a promo on the kid in the wheelchair. Honest to God, go on YouTube and put it in. And it, it, he does not give a shit. And if you're going to go that route in a, in a felony baloney style of trampoline cowboys that are out there with, with, uh, you know, uh, 7,000 high spots. I, I mean, it's, it's refreshing to see. That's yeah. Funny. I just hope it is. I think it is legit. And I, but I hope it is because if it's not, I think they're, Tony Khan, they have a tendency to overdo things where like the thing with everybody bleeds now on that show. It's just, that it kind of takes away the effect of having uh, somebody really having a match like the Texas death match last night. I mean, but you have girls bleeding now. I mean, it's just, it seems like it's like, uh, used to always be a rare thing. They bring it up for something special and now it's, you see it on TV every week. I just, I, I think that the the blood should be strictly maybe pay per view or a major angle. It shouldn't yeah. be just because you get desensitized to it. And that's that's the thing. You the, you know, a cage match isn't a cage match if you see it every week. Yeah, you, you know, what right. I mean? and it should always yeah. be a blow off. It should be the to end the feud. That's it, like. All the high spots. Sorry about that. Any uh, oh, all the high spots. Like ever since Mick Foley flew off the cage, people have desensitized, and you see people doing all kinds of crazy stuff all the week. I, I mean, and people don't, and I don't want to say people don't care, but they just it's not it's something they've seen and they've seen all the time now. So it's just um, I just think you have to bring it out in spots. You got to pick your spots with these things and make it mean something. Yeah, absolutely. And I agree. Uh, on that note. I was having a conversation with a buddy of us that we all know and still trying to get him on the podcast. Is this is this call sign Vincent Barbarino? <laughs> it, it could be. Is, Ch- is he holding Ch- out mo- for money? <laughs> Chachi Acola. Uh, we, I, I told him, and I'm going to tell you guys, and it's going to be on this podcast, somebody is going to get paralyzed on AEW TV. And it's going to be on live TV. It's either going to be on a weekly show or a pay-per-view because they've come this close so many times. Yeah. These major injuries that that never happen. Right. And they just skate by. And I'm telling you, it's going to happen. And it's going to be a train wreck when it happens. And then try to get sponsors after that happens on live TV. All these sponsors that you have because it's not the blood. It's these high spots that yeah. these untrained guys, you're not talking about guys that have been doing it for years. You're talking about green guys that haven't had a lot of matches that only wrestle once a week. Somebody's going to get hurt. And remember I said it, cause it's going to happen. That's I'm going on record to say it's oh, going to yeah. happen. And That's gonna, like the go WWE got lucky with Big E. I'm, they're lucky his neck is built like a tree trunk because right. he should have broken his, I mean, he did b- break a, one of his, a couple of his vertebrae, but he's lucky he's not paralyzed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I mean, look what happened at draws. Yep. That's that. Yep. That's my point right there. And that happened at a house show. It wasn't even during a live TV. So, yeah. mark my words, the way that they pushed the envelope, not with the verbal, not with the blood. It's the it's the spot. Was it a was it a WrestleMania that Steve Stone Cold and uh, Owen Hart fought, and Owen Hart gave him the tombstone? I, and- I thought. Oh, and he gave it to him wrong because yeah. he sat yeah. out like it was a pile driver. Yeah. I think it, I. I'm not saying it was a WrestleMania. I think it was a SummerSlam. It was yeah. the IC title match. Yeah, but that that's that's minuscule well, compared I mean, to seeing oh, yeah. some, something that's going to happen. Well, I mean, look look what happened. I mean, look what happened to Owen Hart. Yeah. Oh yeah. oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, it's look. I mean, these guys, these guys are incredible athletes. They're doing stuff like, I mean, what's his face? The dude that's 160 pounds that flies around the ring like uh you know, skateboard dude from... Oh, Darby Allen? Yeah, Darby Allen. That, I mean, that dude's going to die. Yeah. Start, they, like, those guys are going to have a hard time getting past 40, those guys with their body, the way the way it is. You know. But uh, let me let me pause you there. We got about five minutes left, then we want to try a new uh, segment to the show. We're going to do uh, record pick of the week, and uh, Tom's going to tell you about his pick of the week with uh, album. Well... This week, I'm going with Metallica, Ride the Lightning, from 1984. Good one. Good tune. Gets, just, gets the juices flowing. Gets back before Metallica kind of 
started commercial. Doing little... Yes, yes. Yep. Uh, good tunes on that. Fate to Black, Phone the Bell Tolls, oh, Trapped on the Ice. Yep. I, my uh, go to on that one is uh, Creeping Death. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's. That's uh, probably my favorite one on the album. Definitely my favorite. Yeah. Um, but uh, so we're going to probably wrap this up for this week. We're going to tell you to like, subscribe, and thanks for all the support for the people that I know watch it, the nosy people. They want to be nosy, see what these guys are talking about. They're all they're, my fans. They, yep, they're trolling. You know, they like to troll. They'll say, we don't watch that stuff. We're just hey, don't forget with- Rock Street Brewery, man. Oh, yeah. Uh, buddy Scott at Brock Street Brewery. We're waiting for a sponsorship. Scott, send us some stuff. We could use, a, Ed could use a, a good setup over there. It, maybe uh, some swag you can wear. Maybe uh, throw a, a black light on him or something to illuminate that room. Looks like you're uh, <laughs> you're doing it from a uh, closet apartment. But <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> High society down here, baby. Yeah. So uh, in closing, you guys uh, got anything or are we going to wrap it up? Or Yeah. I think we'll wrap it up. Ta- Tampa, Colorado, Stanley Cup. Oh, Tampa, Tampa Colorado. Colorado, Ed with the call. All right. I'm going, uh, let's see, Carolina and. Uh, Flyers? Yeah. Oh, that's right. They're, they're not very good this year. This is true. Take your shots now because they're rebuilding. Give them six, seven years. They're going to be up there. Again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't, I can't wait. Hopefully, hopefully, we'll still be doing this then. So, uh, Tom, hey, one, one last, one last oh, thing ahead. before I interrupt Tom. We need to get Tom a megaphone that has Boston Bruins on it. Okay, we need to put that in the budget. By we'll the way, work okay? on that. We'll work on that. We'll, I'm, we'll I'm, yeah, working on it. I'm right. getting the big chain that's got the Bruins emblem that hat that they all sell now. Yep. Yep. Yeah, just hit it. Anything to get ratings. We're here for ratings. <laughs> we're, and then we'll we'll work on the on the uh, swag later on. But anything mm-hmm. to get it going. So for the three of us, we'd like to say thanks, and we'll uh, see you for episode four next week. See you next week. Later.